What is this? What's what's this, Nigel? What is that round thing over there? This? The flux capacitor? The flux? That's a very <laughs> fancy flux capacitor. Looks expensive. What's going on, guys? Ronnie here. Nigel here. You guys have seen him on Instagram. The guy, you guys that have been following us on Instagram. So he's our technician slash fabricator. Uh, he's the mastermind behind this beautiful turbo kit. He's the one that zapped everything together. This turbo kit was kind of a long time in the making situation kind of deal. Uh, we wanted to make a top mount that would clear AC, power steering, uh, proper heat management for it. We wanted to run oil, obviously oil lines, but also water lines because it's a zonal rotor and it does it, you know, take the water lines and you can burn out that seal if you don't use it. Some people don't use it. We want to incorporate it because that's how the turbo was designed. We got a Vargin clamp over here. Well, you guys will get to see the turbo kit later, but it's uh, it's a, you know, it's a f***ing kit. And like I said, it clears everything. This is Adrian's car. Uh, this car was dropped off to us pretty much bone stock, right, Nigel? It was bo bone stock. Completely stock. Yeah, I believe he didn't have anything on this no. car, oh, aside from the intercooler. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, we don't like that unit, but whatever. We worked around it. Yeah, literally. I mean, we got a three inch going into that. It's not even a two and a half. Yeah, that, that was a hard right, one. Right, Nigel? That, that one was a what? It's not even a two and a half. It's a, like a two and a... It's a little bit smaller than two and a half, actually. So the couplers kind of fit on it uh, a little weird. Yeah. We made it work. So. Yep. And uh, over here, same kind of same thing. The pipe's not here, but uh, we made it work. But this is a stock block. Uh, Nigel just did cams and studs. So it's got S2s, 5041 beehives, um, L19s. We did a gunk two intake manifold and <laughs> we got a beautiful stm fuel rail dash six in dash six out fuel lab regulator this guy basically got everything all the fancy parts yeah everything awesome. again nigel's our technician uh he's also a fabricator he's obviously very good uh with what he does so nigel to give him a little bit of background about yourself man um so i started out in dodge stealths uh vr4s just kind of did like light fab work and engine work with those uh more recently i moved into dodge vipers and i was Ooh. building twin turbo kits for those mm. uh, for a shop out here so i was doing everything from building the motors fabricating the turbo kits uh, i mean you name it from start to finish we pretty much did everything at that shop um, and now i'm kind of in a new realm learning the evos and gtr world and it's been an awesome experience so far and this is what we've come up with for Speed Lab. Um, I'm really happy with the way this kit turned out. I think we're gonna do a we're gonna do a top and bottom mount on yes. the, on, uh, on mm -hmm. the Evo 89 Yes, bars. we are. So that'll be next. Is doing the bottom mount setup, and then we're gonna do something special for the Evo 10 guys, which is mm -hmm. gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna be a surprise. Yeah, yeah. He's a f he's a fast learner, so <laughs> I think in a couple of weeks he'll take over the laptop, and I'll just go home, and uh, that'll be it. Just went from a stock car to. Uh, 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 pretty much an FBO with a semi-built head, I guess you could call it, with the springs in there. Um, we did not do valve stem seals on it, but they, they, they looked okay, so we didn't have to. This car has like 50,000 miles on it. Uh, we don't know the full story behind the blue engine bay, so don't ask. Um, it's unique. Um, I don't know. It, everything looks good now with this stuff in there. We should definitely post it before and after. So yeah, absolutely. You know. Over here, we're working on uh, Albert's car. This this car is getting full brakes, so he's getting the slotted uh, stop tech brake discs. He's getting the the gyro disc, gyro disc. I don't know what, what you call it, how you pronounce it. Um, pads, and then uh, we're also doing a CMC stainless steel brake lines slave cylinder he's just basically re reassessing his old brake system um and then he's gonna get the car calibrated later he's kind of taking care of some small stuff right now nigel just finished up installing the catch can um harmonic damper fluid, the flu fluid damper uh we're, we we're trying to figure out how we're gonna what we're gonna use for this if we're gonna use a stainless pipe uh or just you know use this radiator hose fortunately with this 45 modified a little bit we can kick this down and sideways enough that we can fit a nice four inch intake on there. Looks like it fits perfect too, so. Yep. Aside from, you know, jigging it, this is pretty much done. We just, uh, Nigel's gonna throw in a 450 and this car's pretty much wrapped up. Over here, we got a beautiful 2015 MR, 29,000 miles on the clock. Very tastefully modded, pretty much barely 
modded i would say map3 inch intake ams wide mouth downpipe and uh akrapovich or however you pronounce it it's out of my budget so i don't, I don't know how to pronounce it um uh, exhaust akrapovich um and then uh just some maintenance stuff that we did on this car uh installed some gauges and then it's getting calibrated today and then this one will be out um that mr that i was talking about earlier today got wrapped up again this this car literally just has this uh, map three inch intake and a ams wide mouth that we installed for him here on the three port of course but other than that nothing else and <clears throat> made 290 282 foot pounds of torque at uh right about 25 pounds tapering to 17 um tapers hard because you know stock wastegate doesn't really um hold that well um but yeah that was at about 10.5 afr it says 11 at the tailpipe it's usually about half an afr leaner so um that's where it liked it um again this doesn't really have any other mods to make it more efficient so stock intercooler piping stock intercooler um i'm happy with that uh, customer's happy with that um again this, this car is beautiful guys we just did th these gauges yesterday for it too um so yeah other than that gonna get this off the dyno um and see what tomorrow holds the next day oh, i'm just showing you this Ooh, that's not close at all not at all <laughs> what are we doing today bro well, you know, just a little uh, break, I guess, what, revamp, refresh on this thing, rebuilt right, the calipers. I guess you could call that. Yeah, rebuilt uh, the calipers, new seals, Let's go new look dust at it. seals. Through the extremely clean shop environment that we got right now. It's a mess, that, but. That doesn't have anything everywhere. A messy shop is a busy shop, so. That's true, but um, I gotta clean this up, so. <laughs> Nigel already did the fronts, so we're using the gyro disc. Uh, caliper uh, piston seal kit um, essentially everything aside from the actual pistons themselves this car doesn't have uh, a lot of miles actually I think it's like 22,000 this is Lester's car uh, he's been here before uh, I believe with a twin disc for him a couple months ago he's here for a CMC upgrade uh, he's replacing his slave everything that has to do with the hydraulics literally uh, besides the actual hard lines. Andre's here because I just finished setting up his fail safes and I wanted him to drive the car. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that. But yeah, Nigel, I think finished up the rears already. Yeah, he did. Yep. We're all done. Everything's cleaned up too. These things were filthy. Absolutely they were filthy. filthy. Yeah. So we went ahead and did them the courtesy of just, you know, wiping them down a little bit. It's, it's out and about. Might as well, right? Exactly. So... Other than that, like I said, this car is getting a CMT and a slave. The suited racer. He always has me on camera and I have him on camera. Hey, How does it feel to be on the other side, sir? Uh, it feels awkward. Yeah? Yeah, you got it. No, nice you're a natural. I like that. You like wow, this? Wow, that's beautiful. Huh? Wow, wow, wow. You know what else I have that you like? What's that? Uh, never mind. <laughs> 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 All right, so. Andre just came back from a test drive I uh, after I told him not to shut off the car. Of course, he shut off the car. So. Well, I figured you would play a prank on me because the car didn't go above 3,000 RPM. It didn't? No. Okay, so... So some, I figured some, you were playing a prank so on So it's me. either oil pressure... He tells me, go, go hit red line twice. I'm like... Well, I'll show you guys... <laughs> well, you should have... You should have let it stay on, stay on because uh, so guys the Motec has this feature that you can you're basically logging in real time and you can press T and when you press T I didn't even time T. slot stops huh I didn't push T either although you told me four times of course you didn't so basically we had coolant pressure and um, oil pressure fail safe so I know it's not oil pressure it's coolant pressure fail safe was set at like 21 I think uh, that's why I had him go drive it because I wanted to figure out what it hits turns out it has to be higher than that so we're gonna see uh, exactly what we need to set it to so most likely I'll set it to 30 right now because he's been gapping people for a couple of days now with no issues obviously we're not running into head lift we're not even pushing this thing that hard really I always say that but we really aren't um, so what we're gonna do over here real quickly Andre completely fucked everything up here but it's okay 
We're we also gonna work on um, following directions and instructions. Yeah. So you come, often. You come here and let me oh wow, this one's so much larger than mine. I like this camera. Wow. It's carbon fiber, brother. It's custom made. No, it isn't. It's yeah. That's uh, Louis Vuitton. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, you're fancy now, huh? Yes, sir. All right, you got your new haircut, you got your new yes, color, sir. now you're fancy on us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so, of course, Andre had to just completely shut everything off. And it's not even finding the ECU. Did you plug it in over there, Andre? Yeah. Okay, okay. I think you'll find it over there. We're good. All right, so... Oh, this what is we're really, gonna do. really nice. I like this. I might is, do is a, that, Oh, that wow. You even have, I'm going to do a switch ruin. You're not even going to notice. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the all calibrate tab. If you want to show them this stuff. Oh, that's all right. That's no secret. Showing your handsome face. Oh, thanks, man. Stop it. You're making me feel some type of way. So oil pressure fail safe. Um, why is this disabled? We literally just um, on. I did this uh, super quickly. I completely missed this out. It's actually, this is actually measuring in KPA. So I had it set at 23, so it's not 23 PSI. Mm. KPA, so that's like two PSI. <laughs> so oh. obviously it's gonna hit the fail safe regardless of what RPM you're, I mean, as soon as you reach that RPM because your cooling system should build about 17, 18 pounds, whatever the cap is rated for, that much pressure. So the way I see that is that the fail safe worked. The failsafe definitely worked, but it didn't work <laughs> as intended. You know? Yeah. So, so what we can do in the Moltec is uh, we can either set it up as KPA. We can translate it in Google Translate. Uh, we can either do it based on KPA, or what we can do is we can change the units to PSI and just work in whatever units we're comfortable with. Which in this case, I'll just put it back to PSI. Which on the Moltec it's pretty simple. You'll unlock your layout. You'll go to. You'll right click on it. Active item properties. And then uh, instead of kilopascals, we'll choose PSI. Nice, so 23 KPA was 3.3 PSI, so now we're gonna do 23. This time it's gonna be PSI. And then minimum, we don't have to worry about that. We're just gonna do the same thing with oil pressure because I'm pretty sure oil pressure is the same. No, oil pressure is in PSI, so we're good over there. Oil pressure, if it drops below whatever threshold I have here, the car will completely shut off, so um, that might not be, a, well, I'll leave that there. I mean, um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that there. Because uh, on one hand, you kind of don't want it to shut off on you when you're going like 150 miles an hour, mm. but on the other hand, it's like if you don't shut it off, you're gonna lose an engine. But it's probably better for you to not die. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> rather than lose an engine. But it uh, depends how much you val it depends how much you value your lives. Exactly. I mean, exactly. you know, if your if your life is worth like a 5k motor, then 5k, man. What are you talking about? More like 16 grand. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> if your life is worth like 16 grand or more, then I would say save your life. So but if your life is worth like laundry. three grand or something, then save the motor for sure. That's how I usually set it up though. I set it up super low because, uh, you know, if you do drop oil pressure, you want it to shut down the engine essentially to prevent a failure. So, as you guys can see, our sexy model has his, uh, oh, oh, sir, that's, I can't put that on YouTube. <laughs> Um, Andre has his car up on no jack stands. I don't think he has jack stands on there because he doesn't believe in uh, OSHA regulations. But um, that's right, I'm a 1099 employee. <laughs> Technically, he's not even in the shop all the way. So that's yeah, that's true. So I'll be half half responsible for <laughs> if he if he dies or something. Remember, we uh, talked about if your life is worth like 16 grand or more, then you should <laughs> for sure consider using a fail safe. I'll promise yeah. you this, man. I will give you 50% of my earnings if something happens to you at my shop to whoever you like. That all depends on how good your tax guy is. Because <laughs> on paper, it might not show you make anything. <laughs> is that legal to be on YouTube? <laughs> You're getting quite comfortable there, buddy. Those, uh, the, the tax fraud guys are worse than the 
extended auto insurance guys these Oh, days. I got like seven of those this yeah, week. Yeah, your warranty's expired. I'm like, yeah. you want to warranty this car? Go ahead, bro. Guys, I'm terrible with that. So I'll press number one, meaning I'm interested, and then I'll talk to them for like 20 minutes. And then I'll be like, sorry, no English. And then I'll like hang up or something stupid, like just to waste their time when I'm doing something else, you know? Um, but Andre's doing an oil change. Um, he just realized that uh, we hadn't done an oil change since uh, the car was on the dyno. So the car was on the dyno. We did dial it in on the Motec for now. Uh, it's just on the 85 and then we're gonna do full flex fuel or we might just keep it on the 85. We don't know yet. Just depends on what direction this car goes because it seems that our plans change every time Andre comes here. So we might spray it, we might not. Um, we just took it out in fourth gear. This thing hit 53 pounds of boost. Um, it's, it's moving out, but he's he's out of turbo. Like it's it, it pretty much makes the same power at like 48 than it does at like 53. So it's it's he's he's out of turbo at this point. So we might as well spray it, or he has to go to a bigger turbo, which is completely up to him. But anyway, the point is he's doing an oil change. Uh, we did notice the oil pressure is slightly lower than we like at wide open throttle. So, I mean, this engine has been used and abused. Uh, Chris and then Andre. I mean, Andre drive this thing uh, like he stole it. So, um, it's going, I, it's going to Vegas this weekend. And it's going to Vegas, yeah. Road tripping. So, we just wanted to change the oil. You know, oil uh, fuel dilution is a big problem with uh, E85 cars because, you know, you're putting a lot more fuel into the engine. And, uh, Although we do use HPL, and in my opinion, that's the best oil for fuel dilution. Um, you know, it does get to a point that the oil thins out and then you do have to change it pretty frequently. But um, yeah, we did have a full dyno session, about six hours of pulls on the dyno, right, Andre? Yeah, six so. was it? Yeah, it was, we probably did, you know, 20 pulls on the dyno, 25 yep. pulls on it. More than that, man. More than that. We went Just out on, racing two nights ago, which we yeah. did really well. Yeah. We did very well. Um, you guys can see those uh, races on my Super channel, racer. right here. Yeah. So, yeah, guys, uh, Andre just doing an oil change. I just got caught up with sending out some quotes and stuff. All right, guys. All right, so we got an intruder over here. Oh, nice. oh yeah. yeah, yeah. This I'll person deals with V8s every day, sir. You do not belong here. I mean, it's only half the size. You of belong the on the streets, not in the sheets. I am for the streets, my friend. All right, guys. So. As most of you guys already know, well, most of you guys that watch this channel and watch anything about fast cars, this is Paul from PK Auto Design. Oh, free advertisement. I like Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yes, sir. <laughs> he's like, while you're here, you might as well get to work, Paul. So, no, Paul, today he's not doing any work. Last time he came here, I had him pull a transmission or something. I can't remember what. I hope we, he dropped that motor out. Yeah, I can't, I can't remember what that you were fun. doing. But anyway, so. Nigel's uh, finishing up this car. With One day turnaround. Fingers. The magic fingers. Absolutely. So we got Paul over here. Paul's over here drinking his uh, Gator Light. Gator Light, <laughs> which is I told you that's Pedialyte. It's, Pedialyte, it's a it's a fancy version Next time, for Pedialyte. don't show up at the shop without beer. Okay. I'm bringing hard alcohol next time. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So Paul does a lot of uh, Mustang stuff. He builds a lot of fast Mustangs. It's actually, Slow. all the fast Mustangs that are around in this area. Or this guy's responsible for They're them. They're slow guys, okay? Completely They're not. stock they and are slow. Not. They're not. And look at how sexy this man is. Yeah, old well, 200 just, just like 50 let me, some let me just get it from your toes. Can you, can you show your pretty toes? He just got a fucking uh, pedicure, but he's not gonna show that. But anyway. <laughs> so Paul's over here. It's after hours, it's like seven o'clock. Uh, Nigel's grinding. Um, I just finished up setting everything up for Ray's motor. Waiting on another drop off. Received a message on Instagram. Uh, a friend of a friend was in need of help. Uh, he was driving this car back from Washington and it died on him. Um, and when he was trying to start the car, he was saying he was hearing a clicking sound. Right off the bat, I knew it was a starter issue. Uh, sure enough, they get a towed here off the trailer. The car starts right up. Uh, but this thing needs a lot of TLC. Uh, when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Mint. What do we got here, Nigel? Oh, you know. The other, what is this name? Evo H. Yep. Got an Evo 7 off cover. But yeah, that's nice. So, yeah. this is uh, Willie's Evo 8, guys. Very clean car. Very clean car. 
Um, actually looks very good with that front lip, even though it's not carbon fiber. But the uh, wheel is getting one of our stage two cylinder head packages. So the cylinder head's about to come off. Um, S2s, 5041 B hives, uh, obviously upgraded valves, guides, seals, um, and a bunch of other stuff that we'll get into once the cylinder head's off. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment if you guys have any other ideas, uh, video ideas that you guys want me to cover something. Uh, if you guys want to see fabrication stuff done by Nigel, if you guys want to see engine stuff, whatever you guys can think of. If you need how to's or whatever, um, if I can make your life easier a little bit by you know showing you how to do a certain thing on these platforms of cars that we work on every day, I'll be more than happy to do that. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great weekend, great day, whenever you're watching this. Uh, and I'll see you guys soon.